What is the most deadly animal? Moving from one of the largest animals in the world, we now come to one of the smallest. As small as it is though, it is also the deadliest. It has been estimated that mosquitoes transmit diseases to almost 700 million people annually resulting in 2 to 3 million deaths every year. The second deadly animal is followed by human ourselves. We kill each other about 500 million people each year. The next is African elephant, which followed by saltwater crocodile, hippopotamus, blue ringed octopus, Brazilian wandering spider, carpet viper, leopard, tsetse fly, komodo dragon, hyena, puffer fish, boom slang, African lion, box jellyfish, polar bear, poison dart frog, cape buffalo, black mamba, and the number 21st, the great white shark. I wonder why the great white shark is not in the top 20, although the great white shark seems well, to be well, the well, most well, well, animal. Well, this well, documentary well, may make well, you well, understand well, more about the great white shark life. In the ecology, let's look at the great white shark niche. A great white shark eats fish, pinnipeds, seabirds, dolphins, seals, and other sharks. The great white shark prefers to eat baby sea lions and even grown up one mostly. They are really keen on eating dolphins. The great white shark is a carnivore and only eat meat. So the reason that they have very sharp teeth is to easily kill their prey. The great white shark is a very powerful animal and not many things rise above it. In the natural history, many scientists believe that the great white shark is evolved from megalodon, the biggest shark in the world. The presumed close relation between the megalodon and great white is based on similarities in tooth structure, as both have solid edges on their teeth. This is why we are very lucky, the great white shark is very tiny compared to megalodon. For the inheritance pattern, Scientist is investigating and found that the protein function in great white shark is similar to human. Human can complete the genetic map but still cannot identify clearly about the genetic function of the gene. This is because human dissect only 10 female great white sharks as examples so far. For the variation, tooth from the lower jaw of a white shark. Some are serrated triangular teeth. Some are lobes of caudal fin at about equal size. Some are caudal keel. Some are black spot which may be present at axle of pectoral fin or lunate tail. Let's look at the evolution of the great white shark. For the relationship with closely or related organisms. The relations, interconnections and dependencies within maritime communities are very complex, which is why we only describe the three most important types here, parasitism symbiosis and commensalisms. The best known companions of sharks are pilot fish and remora. Pilot fish unfortunately do not live up to their name. In contrast to what used to be assumed earlier, they do not eat the shark to its prey, but profit from the shark as a commensalism. This includes protection from other predators and profit from leftover food. Sometimes they even surf on the shark's bow wave, eye in the water collecting in front of the shark's nose, an energy-saving way of moving. Remora, in contrast, are rather disturbing for sharks. They are active on the shark's body surface almost all the time to find a beneficial position. Sharks appear very annoyed by the continuous harassment by the remora, since they often attach themselves to sensory alley or hydrodynamically sensitive areas. Often, they try to bed rid of the remora with different maneuvers, or even by jumping from the water and dropping back onto the surface, but even this method only is effective for a short time. Cleaner fish are the only currently known symbiote of the shark. At reef, the sharks regularly visit the cleaning stations of these small fish to have them remove annoying ectoparasites that serve as food for the cleaner fish in turn. The cleaner fish can profit from the rich offer of food. Cobalpods are the bane of the sharks. They are endo as well as ectoparasites. They are considered zooplankton. Divers can often see them as dark, elliptical.
cryptic spots on the dorsal fin or head and gill regions. They can be a few millimeters or several centimeters large. For an adaptation among the very largest of sharks, the great white regularly reaches a length of 20 feet and a weight of more than 2 tons. There is reasonably good evidence that the species can reach lengths of 23 or even 26 feet, but such individuals are notoriously difficult to confirm, let alone weigh. As with other animals, the great white's color is highly variable. In general, the species is dark above and white below, a pattern called countershading. Countershading makes the great white difficult to see because it reduces the contrast between its belly in the shadow of the shark's bulk and its back illuminated by sunlight. Back and flank color in the great white ranges from bronzy and grayish brown to various shades of gray. Pacific Coast specimens tend to be very dark, almost black, above. This darkness helps camouflage the great white against the dark, rocky bottom over which it typically swims. Like other sharks, the skin of a great white is very tough and studded with tiny, tooth-like scales called dermal denticles. Dermal denticles protect the skin from damage and are replaced continually. Each individual denticle has a flat, table-like crown that has a series of raised ridges. These ridges reduce the drag and noise generated by a shark's swimming movements, enabling the great white to glide efficiently in ghost-like silence. As in other sharks, the upper jaw of a great white is not fused to the skull. Instead, the jaws are slung loosely beneath the skull, held in place by flexible connective tissue and braced by accessory cartilages. Special muscles pull the jaw complex forward and down, riding on grooves on the undersurface of the skull. This arrangement allows a great white to protrude its jaws outward from the head, extending the reach of its teeth and creating the partial vacuum that helps suck in prey. white have broadly triangular blades with coarsely serrated edges. The upper teeth are broader and flatter than the lower teeth, which reflects their different roles during biting. The lower teeth stab into and hold secure a food item while the saw-like upper teeth gouge out the hunk of flesh. This dental arrangement allows the great white to feed on prey too large to swallow whole as well as scoop calorie-rich blubber from male carcasses. The eyes of a great white are relatively large and well developed. The retina, light sensitive tissue lining the back of the eyeball of this species contains both rods and cones in a similar ratio to that of humans, about 4 to 1. This suggests that the great white is highly visual and has acute color vision. Although different parts of its retina are adapted for bright and dim light conditions, it is believed that the great white is primarily a daytime hunter. The nostril of a great white consists of a flap of skin that controls water movement into a cup-like structure. The cup-like structure contains a roughly spherical scent-detecting organ called an olfactory bulb. Each olfactory bulb is composed of a series of closely packed plates of tissue that are extremely sensitive to dissolved chemicals. The great white has the largest olfactory bulbs of any shark species measured to date, enabling it to locate bleeding prey decomposing whale carcasses, and seal or sea lion colonies by their distinctive odors. Like other sharks, the great white has specialized sensory organs that detect extremely minute electrical fields. These organs, called ampullae of Lorenzini, consist of clusters of miniature test tube-shaped structures with a sensory hair cell at the base and filled with an electrically conductive jelly. Externally, the open ends of these ampullae appear as clusters of tiny pores peppered over the head. These pores are most richly distributed on the undersurface of the snout and recent work has shown that each cluster has a peak directional sensitivity. The great white uses these electrical receptors to locate hidden prey, such as the tiny electrical signal of its prey's muscles in the otherwise confusing bloody froth of a predatory attack. As in other sharks, the ears of a great white are located close together on top of its head. Each ear consists of a pair of sac-like structures to which are attached three semicircular tubes. Each tube is oriented at right angles to the others is lined with sensory hair cells and contains a non-viscous fluid. This arrangement provides a great white with continuous information on its acceleration and the orientation of its body in all three spatial dimensions. Like other sharks, the great white has a row of sensitive vibration detectors, called the lateral line, 
running along each of its flanks. Together, the two lateral lines allow great white to feel the direction of erratic water disturbances caused by struggling or injured animals that might make easy prey. All sharks breathe by means of gills, but those of the great white are exceptionally large. Each gill filament consists of a feather-like arrangement of thin skin plates. Each of these plates contains tiny arteries called capillaries that carry blood in a direction opposite to that of water flow over the gills. This counter-current arrangement allows the great white efficient uptake of dissolved oxygen from the water, enabling it to pursue an active predatory lifestyle. Although its heart and gills operate at environmental temperatures, portions of the great white circulatory system have been modified to allow retention of body heat. On its way back to the heart, blood inside the veins is heated by muscle contraction and other metabolic processes. This heat is transferred to the arterial blood as it passes through a tightly intermeshed network of tiny veins and arteries. These veins and arteries carry blood in opposite directions, allowing efficient transfer of metabolic heat in what is termed a counter-current heat exchanger. The great white has such heat exchangers around its brain, stomach, and swimming muscles, enabling it to function effectively in waters too cold for most other sharks. Like other sharks, the great white has paired and unpaired fins. The pectoral and pelvic fins are paired, while the first dorsal, second dorsal, anal and caudal, tail fins are unpaired. The pectoral fins control banking, turning, ascending, descending and braking as well as acting as important signaling structures. The first dorsal fin is important in preventing unwanted roll, keeping the shark on an even trim. The caudal fin is the main propulsive structure, featuring an efficient cruscantic shape and supported on either side by sturdy keels. All these fins allow the great white to finely control its movement through the water. As in other sharks, the great whites practices internal fertilization. Mother great whites retain yolky, thin-shelled eggs within the body until development is complete. Such a reproductive mode is termed ovoviviparity. After a gestation period of a year or longer, 5 to 10, and possibly as many as 17, 3 to 5 foot long pups are born in shallow coastal areas. After birth, the pups receive no parental care and are left to fend for themselves. It is believed that post PARTUM great whites may take a year or more off to rebuild their energy stores before becoming pregnant again. The great white is one of the most widely distributed of sharks, having been recorded from coastal and insular waters of almost every region of the globe between 60 degrees north and south latitude. It has also been recorded from oceanic islands including Hawaii, so the Great White is clearly capable of extensive open ocean voyages. The Great White is primarily an inhabitant of cool temperate waters over continental and insular shelves. It seems to prefer areas with rocky bottoms, but it has been recorded over sandy bottoms and on coral reefs as well as in the deep sea. It was formerly thought that Great Whites do not enter kelp forests, but it has been shown to be false. Not only do they enter kelp forests, they apparently also feed there. scientists have discovered that great white sharks actually live longer than previously thought. Using radiocarbon age estimates, Dr. Hamity and colleagues at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution determined the animals can live to the ripe old age of 70 plus years. These findings mean that great white sharks, like humans, may take longer to mature. It also means that overfishing may pose more of a threat to them than previously thought. Nowadays, high risk of extinction because the great white shark was hunted for human sport and was hunted for the teeth and fin. Great white sharks, Carcharodon carcharias, are now listed as vulnerable. So that human influence is affecting paredity, it is vulnerable and in danger so scientists tried to breed the great white shark.